wintry gust of October air swelled through the rural English town of Kingston upon Severn. As crisp leaves danced across the cobblestone streets and countless bicycles passed through the town, the community of Kingston upon Severn was ever changing, for the early two thousands were coming upon them. With the lush green hillside separating them from their neighboring town, the citizens of Kingston upon Severn lived isolated in their little borough. They lived the same way their ancestors had. Laura Walton, a girl just short of fifteen years of age, grew up near the outskirts of town with her mother and younger brother. After school every day, she headed towards the market in the town square, gathering the ingredients for her family's supper that day. Balancing her two bags filled with the local autumn harvest, Laura carefully made her way back towards the far street light at the end of the bridge where she had parked her bike. As she strolled closer and closer to the street light, she slowed down, eventually coming to a halt. Beginning a thorough examination of the street light, Laura noticed there were no shadows cast from the sun around the street light, aside from the long stick like silhouette of the pole. After biking to the market for so long, Laura could recognize the shadows of the wheels on her bike and her bike frame, but she couldn't quite make them out today. Puzzled, she gazed at the flower boxes hanging from the light, only to realize the marigolds that were once in her bike basket were now squashed on the ground. In shock, Lara dropped her bags and approached the streetlight. Her bicycle was gone. Frantic, Lara sprinted back to the market. Mr. Hadley, Mr. Hadley, Lara hollered, coming closer to the first stand at the market where goat cheese was being sold. Lara, calm down, darling. Is there a problem? An older man wearing a long green apron bellowed, peeking from behind the booth. My bike, it's Gone, have you seen it? Laura responded, recalling the many aspects of her be beloved bike. She remembered the seafoam teal of the frame with the beautiful leather handlebars and the seat, the sound of her back chain turning back and forth, and the front and back weaved baskets where she had placed fresh cut marigolds from the previous day's market. I'm sorry, Laura, but I haven't seen it since you parked after school, Mr. Hadley stated glancing back at the streetlight. The sun is about to set, Lara. Why don't you start walking back home before dark? I can help you look for it tomorrow if you'd like. I guess, Lara said, disappointed she must walk all the way home. Her father had given her her bike as a gift right before he passed away two summers ago. Tell your mother and Thomas I say hello. Mr. Hadley called as Lara gloomily paced back across the bridge. Lara picked up her bag and began the two-mile trek home. Passing over the bridge, Lara peered off the edge looking at the streets and the river below. As she continued her journey, she passed by the rusty old fountain in the middle of the lake, Mrs. Parker's old tea shop, Mr. Kensington's gelato stand with his line as long as the street, Mr. Abbott's pet shop, and countless staircases lined with cigarette butts and shallow puddles. As she approached the outskirts of town, near her family's bungalow, she passed through the shadows. According to her mom, the shadows was a dangerous place. Lara was told never to go down any of the dark, ominous alleyways, approach any gangs, or follow anyone who asked her to follow them. Normally, on her bike, she could bike the long way and skip the shadows. But, since she was walking, it was the fastest way home. A group of boys quickly ran past, frightening Lara. Head bowed, she walked faster and faster. Her heart pounded in her chest while she twirled her hair. As a result of the fast speed she was traveling, two tomatoes hopped right out of the bag. Questioning her safety, she decided to let them go, unsure what were to happen if she stopped. Finally, Lara passed through the shadows, relaxing as she was now two-thirds of the way home. As she gazed far into the distance, she could see infinite lavender farms, which always brought a smile to her face, replacing the memories from the shadows. As the sun slowly painted the evening sky, 
Laura knew she must be getting home soon. Rushing home, she tripped over a piece of offset cobblestone, causing her tomatoes and lemons to quickly bounce out of the paper bags. After picking up her spilled fruits, Laura continued her walk home, snacking on one of the fallen cherry tomatoes. Once home, Parsley, Lara's golden retriever, quickly greeted Lara, running up to her tail wagging with a broad grin from ear to ear. Licking Lara's face, the two made their way over to the kitchen. From a distance, Lara could hear her brother say, Lala's home, which was her brother's nickname for her. As they turned the corner, Parsley guided Lara to her mother, who was helping Lara's younger brother, Thomas, focus on his homework. How was your day in school, Lara? Anything new? Anything exciting? Lara's mother quickly interrogated. It was good, Lara responded. That still doesn't explain why you're home an hour later than usual. I mean, it's almost dusk. What have you been doing all day, young lady? Relieving herself from the pain of carrying the heavy bags all the way, Lara placed the heavy bags of produce on the kitchen table while turning to confront her mother. I went to the market, Mother. I bought all the ingredients for tonight's dinner. Salmon salad with freshly baked bed. Yes, and? Lara's mother persisted, gesturing for Lara to release more of her knowledge. Well, and my bike was stolen, so I had to walk home. Please don't get mad, Lara pleaded, grabbing her yellow sunflower apron off a hook and reaching for the cutting board from the cupboard while beginning to chop up the tomato, celery, and lettuce. I've told you several times to take, you need to take special care of that bike, Lara's mom scolded. As she looked at Lara's glum face, she realized how much Lara missed and cared about her bike. She said, she then gave Lara a light hug and said, all right then, Lara, you can fish my old bike out of the garage and use that tomorrow turning around to finish aiding Thomas with his homework. As she turned on the radio, Lara prepared their dinner that night. Occasionally slipping a few scraps off the counter for parsley, Lara plated a delicious meal for her and her family. When dinner finished, Lara's mother did the dishes, allowing Lara for some time to do her homework. With her homework complete, Lara tucked herself into bed, turned her night light on, and using a flashlight under the covers, finished reading her favorite book, The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Burnett, and slowly fell asleep, dreaming about Mary Lennox and her adventures in the little garden. That morning, Lara sifted through her family's garage, moving boxes, lifting books, and relocating general junk. After 15 minutes of decluttering, Lara located her mother's old bike. The frame was a dirt-stained cream with a torn leather seat and handlebars and countless spider webs nestled between the spokes on the bike wheels. To avoid being late for school that day, Lara started biking immediately, soon realizing both her tires were terribly flat. Attempting to remain poised and have a positive attitude, Lara waved goodbye to Thomas and her mother who were standing on the front porch and drifted down the street. Parsley, on his leash being held by Thomas, watched as Lara disappeared around the corner. Bye, Lala, Thomas exclaimed. Trying to think of something other than the horrible condition of her mother's bike, Lara viewed the previous school day's lessons through her head. Metaphors and similes are both literary writing tools that utilize figurative language. A predicate noun modifies the subject. Charles Darwin discovered natural selection. King Tut is the same person as King Tut in common. The quadratic formula is Lara stopped. Her legs exhausted from biking. She was a mere third of the way to school, traveling right through the lavender fields. The flat tires took a toll on her energy, causing her legs to tire much quicker than usual. Still, Lara persisted. Once at school, she parked her bike, quickly braided the side of her hair, and ran to her first period class, English. As she ran from class to class all day, her mother's bike kept a close eye on her. Around Lara's lunchtime, an overcast blanket lined the sky, 
slowly beginning to cry. As raindrops fell, they replenished the youth within Lara's mother's bike, washing the layers of dirt off the elderly bicycle. While the overcast blanket still lined the sky at 2.30, when Lara ran out of her school ya- her house, opening her yellow umbrella, a joyous expression spread across Lara's face as she slowly realizes, realized the transformation of the bike as she hopped on and headed over to the market. As Lara approached the bridge, she slowed down when she reached the stra- streetlight. To ensure her mother's bike wouldn't be stolen, Lara took her shoelace off her shoe and tied it to the bike and streetlight, preventing anyone from grabbing it and going. Lara traveled towards the town square when the market was taking place and wandered from booth to booth. She had pulled out a page from her recipe book the night before and was referencing it, making sure she got the exact amount of everything so she could create their dinner without wasting a scrap. She was planning to make chicken soup with vegetables. One half chicken, please, Lara instructed a man with a large butcher knife and a dirty white apron. Turning around to the opposite vendor, Lara ordered, Four celery stalks, four carrots, and one onion, please. As Lara headed back towards the bridge, passing Mr. Hadley at the cheese stand, she saw something that caught her eye. A young boy... A couple years older than Lara herself, rode a gorgeous seafoam teal bike, glistening in the sunshine, with perfectly tailored leather seating and handles, a basket weaved in front and in the back. While the sight seemed pretty ordinary, two details popped out at Lara. First, the boy's clothing, which consisted of ripped jeans, a worn-down plaid shirt, and bare feet, did not quite fit the personality of the bike. Second, the bike awfully resembled Lara's bike. And then it clicked. Lara was looking directly at the thief of her bike. Lara sprinted across the bridge straight towards the streetlight and hopped on her mother's bike, quickly following the boy in front of her. Since Lara's tires were so flat, she biked at her full energy, racing behind the boy who was leisurely biking in front of her. In the back basket, Lara could see the boy had a loaf of bread and cheese. Deciding not to immediately confront the boy, Lara decided to follow him home to see where he lived, since, as of now, he was heading towards Lara's house. One by one, they passed, through the, they passed the gelato shop, tea shop, and parks. It was quite peculiar, Lara thought. The boy was traveling right towards Lara's home. But then... Right as they reached the outskirts of town, he changed directions. As the sun slowly peered through the overcast sky, Lara decided to continue following the boy. As the street slowly turned into gravel, Lara recognized this way as the way towards the shadows. And then there she was, biking through alleyways, splashing through pothole puddles on the streets, and cruising through streets with flickering streetlights, all simply to follow the boy. Finally, the boy took a sharp right turn, heading straight towards a little RV parking lot hidden behind the shadows of the old town. Lara stopped biking, not wanting to hint her presence. Peter, you're home, cried an old woman in an apron, peeking out of the door. Peter ran up to her and gave her a kiss on the cheek. That bike you found's really helping you out. Yes, Mama. The boy exclaimed, I've gotten dinner tonight. I've gotten bread for dinner tonight and breakfast tomorrow. The only thing is the bike hurts my feet from pedaling, Peter bellowed, gesturing towards his sore bare feet. The two made their way into the home. The lights turned on, and Lara turned around, biking back home. As she passed through the lavender field, she thought to herself, The bicycle has much more value to Peter than me, she thought. It helps him get home faster and lets him bring his dinner home. Once Lara arrived at home, served her chicken soup, and finished her homework, she had a brilliant idea. She must first get her mother's permission, though. As Lara was sitting at the kitchen table, she asked her mother, who was watching the bowls, Mother, 
Lara questioned, trying to first get her mother, her mom's attention. When I get my bike back, what happens to your old bike? Lara's mom switched off the faucet, placing the dish, her dish back in the sink. Why, I suppose we'll go back into the garage until you lose your bike again, Lara's mom stated, strolling towards her. Then, if I promise to never lose my bike again, and I find it tomorrow, would I be allowed to repair your bike and give it to someone else? Lara wondered, hoping her mother would attempt to understand. Well, if you happen to find it tomorrow, like that would ever happen, sure. Who would you give the bike to? I mean, it's not in the best shape, Lara's mother asked. This boy from school, Lara quickly stated, traveling through her imagination to devise the perfect lie. He, he was asking if anyone has a bike for him to borrow since he got a job as a newspaper boy and a bike would be faster for him than walking from house to house as he does right now. With a hint of a guilty smile on her face, knowing she had just created a terribly false yet believable statement, Lara's mom agreed to the idea. The plan was on. Lara was going to fix up her mother's old bike and grant it to Peter as a gift at market the next day. That night, using a needle and thread from her grandmother's old sewing kit, Lara sewed together the old leather seats and handlebars back together. Since the wheels were both terribly fat, flat, Lara pumped them up to the best of her ability, filling them up just short of full. With all the dirt washed off from the previous day's rain, there was just one more touch missing before it looked like new. Lara sprinted out into their backyard, grabbing two daffodils. Running, running back into the garage, she placed them perfectly into the front basket. As Lara walked back into the house, her bike's all fixed up for tomorrow. Lara remembered something from her encounter with the boy. Peter did not have a pair of shoes. She decided to slip a pair of her grandfather's old sandals into the rear compartment, just as a little extra goodie for Peter. Early that morning, Lara set out on her journey to school. Sitting on her new repaired leather seat and holding her handlebars tightly, Lara passed the lavender field and finally arrived at the schoolhouse. Ready for her classes, Lara parked the bike and headed in for school. Later that day, a stampede of children erupted from the schoolhouse. Lara followed right behind. She headed to her bike glanced at the daffodils, and hopped on, starting her ride to the market. She approached the town scar square and went past the streetlight. She wasn't going to park her bi the bike today. She hopped off the bike and walked it through the market. Afternoon, Lara, Mr. Hadley said, welcoming Lara into the market. I see you got a new bike. Those daffodils look quite splendid. Fresh cut from my garden, Lara replied approaching the cheese stand. Oh, and about the bike. It's my mother's old one. I just fixed it up last night. Why, that was mighty quick, Mr. Hadley explained, turning around to take an old lady's order. I have a plan to get my bike back today, Lara exclaimed, continuing her stroll through the market. I'm sure you do, Mr. Hadley reassured. As Lara strolled through the market, she passed by Mr and Mrs. Elderbury's flower stand, the Garnet Brothers fruit and vegetable shop, and Mr. Crew's freshly baked bread stand. While she made her way towards the bread stand, she saw someone who looked quite familiar to her. A boy, wearing ripped jeans and a worn plaid shirt, paused in front of Mr. Crew's bread stand. He was holding a teal bike in hand, and as he was handed a fresh loaf of bread. Lara was looking right at Peter and her bike. Lara propped her bike up against a bench and decided to walk right towards Peter. While Peter paid for his loaf of bread, Lara decided it would be best for her to buy a loaf too, to not stand out. 
Holding her warm sourdough bread in hand, Lara approached Peter. Excuse me, sir, but I think that is your that is my bike in your hand, Lara kindly stated, gesturing towards her bike. While she displayed a warm smile across her face, inside, a whirlwind of nervous emotion swelled, not knowing what Peter's response would be. Expressionless, Peter stood there, as if he didn't hear anything. Lara walked away from the conversation and paced towards her mother's bike. Lifting it up from against the wrought iron bench, Lara walked back towards Peter with, who, in shock, had still not moved from the bike or bread stand. Gazing mysteriously at Lara, this Peter gazed mysteriously at Lara. This random girl, whom he has never met, is suddenly claiming that his bike is no longer his. You have no idea who I am, Lara started. My name is Lara Walton, and you are? Peter, the boy whispered, shaking Lara's hand. If you don't mind, could I please have my bike back? Lara questioned. I mean, I guess sure, the boy said with a hint of disappointment in his tone. He turned around and glumly handed the bike to Lara. Well, to be frank, I didn't come today only to get my bike back. While this may seem quite peculiar, yesterday evening I followed you home from market since, you know, I recognized my bike and I wanted to see where I was going. Through my observation, I noticed that this bike actually means quite a lot to you, Lara began as Peter curiously nodded. So, I decided to give you a new bike. I fixed it up last night, and I think you'll like it. It has a basket for you to put your bags from school and market, and you can use it as your main vehicle, Lara concluded, rolling the bike over towards Peter. Wow, thank you, Peter gleaned, gleamed while inspecting the bike from top to bottom. The daffodils, they're... Gorgeous, Peter continued. Where do you find them? My garden, Lara gleamed. One more question. The shoes? Peter wondered, pointing to the old sandals Lara had placed in the back basket. Oh, um, they're just a little extra goody. I noticed that your feet were all sore from biking barefoot all the way home, and I, well... I just wanted to make sure your feet would never be treated that horribly again, Lara informed the boy. Peter lifted the sandals out of the basket and slipped them onto his feet. They fit comfortably. You sure you're going to give this all to me, Peter confirmed, hoping the miracle wasn't too good to be true? Well, one condition. Please promise to not steal anyone else's bike. But, aside from that, yes, you deserve it, Lara spoke, hopping on her bike. I promise, Peter agreed, before exclaiming, wait. He walked away from his new bike and strolled right over towards Mr. and Mrs. Alderberry's flower stand. Lara, puzzled as to what the boy was doing, remained atop her bike, watching curiously. The boy gestured through a bucket of roses, and Mr. Elderberry handed him two fuchsia ones. Slowly walking back, Peter placed them in Lara's basket. Sorry about what happened to the marigolds, Peter apologized. Here's a little gift to thank you for the daffodils in my new bike. Lara, overwhelmed with what just happened, gave Peter a hug. Smiling, the two biked home together, Peter leaving at the shadows and Lara continuing on to her bungalow. Whenever the two ran into each other at market again, they bought different flowers for their bike baskets. First, Lara bought Peter tulips, then Peter bought Lara larkspur, then Lara bought Peter lilies, and Peter bought Lara sunflowers. And it continued that way, each day, adding a new flower to the basket. Hydrangeas, carnations, amaryllises, 
dahlias, roses, peonies, snapdragons, honeysuckle, orchids, lavender, and lilacs all visit the insides of the two baskets. This act forever changed both their lives. Now, Lara found a new friend in Peter. Peter found a new friend in Lara, and the two discovered the true power of pure kindness. No act of kindness, no matter how small, is ever wasted.